Hi, this is Emily Lee, Part of Art from the Heart, and this video is part of Laura Stirks' 10,000 YouTube subscribers video hop. Congratulations, Laura, on this wonderful achievement. I'm honored to be joining you, all the other talented YouTube artists, and your generous sponsors for this fun celebration. I'll share more about the store coupon and prizes you can win at the end of my video. I'll be featuring three Winnie and Walter stamp sets on my card. The first one is Renee's leaves, and I'll be using three of the leaves and the little acorns. The second one is Happiest of Holidays, and I'll be using the Grateful For You sentiments from that. The third set is Into the Woods, and I'll be using the wood grain outline. I'm starting with a piece of Tim Holtz Distress Watercolor cardstock, and I'm using the Magic Powder bag on it to eliminate stray specks when I apply embossing powder. I arrange the three leaves in different directions to show that they're floating down the card diagonally, from the top right down to the bottom left corner. I ink up the stamps with Versamark Watermark Pigment Ink and apply Hero Arts Gold Embossing Powder and heat set it. I'm planning on putting my sentiment in the middle of the card, whether it's smack in the middle or off to one side. Either way, it'll be around the center, so I'm trying to plan the stamping of these little acorns around that. Now I'm going to stamp two more acorns to fill in the space. It's important to use the Magic Powder Bag in between, especially when it's humid. I would have gotten embossing powder stuck to most of the card if I didn't use it during this time of year. To stamp the background, I need to create a mask for the leaves and acorns. I'm using a roll of Judikin's masking tape. I've had this same roll for years and I absolutely love it. It's perfectly sized for customizing to suit your needs. I use it for everything from masking stamps and borders to holding dies in place when I'm using my die cutting machine. It wasn't available for a long time, but now you can get it at both Ellen Hudson and Simon Says Stamp. I have both links listed below in my supply list. It doesn't matter what ink you use for stamping masks. I automatically reach for the Memento Tuxedo Black Dye ink, so that's what I'm using here. I use a small acrylic block and quickly stamp out the same images I heat embossed on the watercolor panel. Then I quickly fussy cut them all. I've sped up this process and I'm not showing all of it since it's very boring to watch. Once I have all the masks ready, I'm going to cover up each heat embossed image to protect them from the wood grain background, which I'll be stamping next. I couldn't get the last acorn mask off my grid mat, so I had to get out my trusty tweezers. The wood grain stamp is going to hang off the edge of the card on both ends, so I'm centering the card in the misty. I'm going to stamp the wood grain three times across the card. I think it's easier to start in the middle and then stamp the sides after. That way, the centered panel helps line up the other two. This helps to make your stamping symmetrical. I use the ruler on the sides of the misty to help me line it up. Again, I'm using the magic powder bag since there will be a lot of embossing powder on this panel. This time, I'm using Hero Art Sparkle Embossing Powder. This is one of their newer embossing powders and it's very pretty. I have a feeling I'll be using it a lot on my holiday cards. Even as I'm sprinkling the powder onto the Versamark ink and heat setting it, you can see all the sparkle. Now I'm ready to stamp the wood grain pattern on the two sides to cover the remainder of the background. I probably could have placed the second section closer to the middle, but the good thing about using background stamps is that they're very forgiving. You don't have to line up perfectly to look good. For the final panel, I'm going to flip the direction of the knots in the wood so that it's distinctly different from the other two panels. Since it's so subtle, it shouldn't matter too much, but it's something that I like to do anyway. After all the heat embossing is done, I can remove the masks and start watercoloring. I've chosen six Distress inks for the leaves, and I'm going to swatch them on the Ranger craft sheet. First, I use a brush to add clear water to the leaves so the color can just flow freely within each leaf. I dab different colors and let the water do all the coloring for me. After the leaves are colored, I add water to the little acorns and repeat the process. When the panel has dried, I can add subtle colors to the wood grain area around the leaves and acorns. I swatch the other two colors on the craft sheet and add water to the panel before adding color. I'm using evergreen bough in the center and weathered wood on the edges. The shape I ended up creating looks like a river. I hadn't intended on it looking like that, but watercoloring can be surprising because it's not so precise, and that's what I like about it. After the panel dries, I decide that I want to add some splatter, so I reapply the masks and use Walnut Stain Distress Spray Stain. I simply tap on the tube to get the effect I want. I add more splatter to the upper right-hand corner where the larger images are. 
and less in the bottom left-hand corner where the acorns are. I remove the masks and allow the panel to dry completely. Now I'm going to stamp the sentiment on dark chocolate cardstock using the Happiest of Holidays stamp set. I'm using the large scripted grateful with a small secondary sentiment. I use my magic powder bag on the cardstock since I'll be heat embossing the sentiment in white. Then I ink up the stamp with Versamark ink. I'm going to add some patterned paper and a doily to give this card a shabby chic style. This peachy pink zigzag pattern is from a retired Jen Hadfield paper pad, but I'll link up to a newer one that has similar colors. I'm going to use a stitched arch die by My Favorite Things to remove some of the two blank corners. That's where the patterned paper and doily will be exposed by the watercolor panel. I position the stitched arch, hold it in place with removable tape, and run it through my big shot. For the opposite corner, I use the first piece to get the exact same angle. Now I can assemble part of the card and prepare to stack the layers. I trim the pattern paper down to A2 size and adhere it to the card base. Here's how everything will look together. I fidget with the sentiment strip quite a bit, unsure of where to put it. Since I don't want to cover up too many of the watercolored images, I'm going to leave it in the center and off to the left. After I determine the final placement of the sentiment, I use a pencil to mark where I need to trim the strip. I briefly considered including the doily at the top only, but I'm going to cut the doily in half so I can have it peeking out the edges of both the arches. I'm going to show more of the doily at the top where the images are larger and less at the bottom where the images are smaller, just to balance the card design. When I'm satisfied with the design and placement of all the elements, I can assemble the card. I don't want too many foam tape layers, so I'm just going to pop up the sentiment. I'm going to use mini glue dots to adhere the watercolored panel. That way, there's still a bit of dimension and it's not completely flat against the card base or the doilies. I use an X-Acto knife to tuck glue dots under the doilies after they're positioned. Then I apply foam tape to the back of the sentiment panel and pop it onto the card. Now my card is done! Here you can see all the sparkle and shine from the gold embossed leaves and the sparkle embossed wood grain background. Please refer to the supply links below if you're interested in any of the products I used in this video. You can also visit my blog for stills and more information about my card. Remember to leave a comment below for your chance to win one of the fabulous prizes, then click on the link in the description below to head to the next video on this hop. Thanks so much for watching and hopping.